morning, everybody. It's a bit of a gloomy morning here. Thought we were going to be able to start this demo early today at like 9.30 or so, but I'm pretty sure that's not going to happen now. Um, looks like we got a bit of a drizzle overnight and uh, made some things a little bit wet. So we're, uh, we're here with the Fent, ideal, but we also had the request to bring uh, a tractor too. So we ended up bringing 1038 over and we're going to put it on the buggy. Customer runs uh, green, obviously, here. We've got a 9220 articulator on the buggy, and I believe it's a 9760 combine. So a little bit older, class 7 combine with an 8-row. Um, they, uh, they said to, to Matt, the other sales guy that's sort of working with them, that they're getting ready to, to look at making a change. Uh, sorry, 9670 STS. So, uh, so yeah, so we're here today to do that. Um, I did a little bit of a test run last night. So I'm finding as we move to the east here, um, corn is a bit higher bushels, but it's also threshing off the, the cob a little bit more difficult. So I'm going to take one of the round bar segments out of the concave and put a key stock in this morning just to give a little bit more aggression. And then hopefully that'll help with uh, not having any corn coming off the back end. The, the green one was kicking some out. The, ours was doing not bad, but I think I can do better if I have a little bit more. So there's one kernel right there. Another one right there behind the track marks. One, two. So anyways, I just... Uh, I think that this will help. So I'm going to do that here right now, show you how that works. It's actually really easy and an ideal. And then uh, we'll be ready to go, hoping if the wind picks up, maybe by 9.30 or 10, but we'll have to see, I guess. So I haven't really shown how these machines are set up right at the moment. So um, nice thing with this is it's a, a click. There's no uh, wrenches or anything like that, like some of the other colors need to Get underneath the uh, the panels and stuff. So right here, that's where the engine connects to this gearbox. So you've got a gearbox right here. It runs the hydrostat pumps off the back. This pulley here drives down, and this runs our cleaning shoe. This one here goes to the back, and that drives our rotor at the back. And then this one here, this is a variable speed, and that drives the shaft all the way to the front that runs the header. And then at the back here, we have a variable speed drive to be able to run the rotors. It's two speed, so you flip it from high to low but we also have a hydraulic reverser to be able to reverse the rotor out if we need to. And then up here, that transverses across to the other side of the combine and that comes down and that runs the chopper on the other side. So pretty simple, not a lot of belts, not a lot of moving parts. There are some hydraulic hoses, but of course this is a hydraulically driven transmission. So most of these are going forward. There's a few of them that come to the back and they run the four wheel drive at the back. So, that's what we're looking at there. And of course, the last one that I always forget off the back side of the gearbox that runs this belt down to our unloading arm. So we need to get into look at the concaves this morning. So of course with one arm. So that handle just unlocks, opens, and then the panel comes down. So there's our front rotor grates. I've got four round bars in there right now. This is a sensor array. So to take these out, all I have to do is this has a, a small 
16 mil bolt just up on the front here that joins these two concaves together. I have to take that out. And then there's two bolts on the other side that we just have to undo and then the concave slides out. So what I usually do is I, uh, I carry a two by four with me and I just slide it underneath the concave, undo the two bolts, slide it out, and it's, it's really not that big of a job. So on this side, so there's not a whole lot going on here. This is the cleaning fan area. Everything gets sucked in from the top, but there is one belt right here. And what it is, is in a lot of other machines, the beater that's in the front, so as it comes up the, the feeder house, there's a great big drum right here, and that helps get all the crop up into the rotors. A lot of other machines have just a high low up there on that intake drum. So it's not always feeding optimal into whatever rotor speed you're having. What Fent did is they ran a belt from the back where the rotor drive is all the way to the front. And that now times that intake drum with the rotor so it's feeding at the proper speed. What it also allowed them to do is we put a shear bolt in right here. So now if we ever get anything up into that intake drum, a stone, a piece of wood or whatever, it has a chance to shear that off so it doesn't do damage by pulling anything up into the combine. So actually is, uh, I think it's pretty smart how they ended up doing that. So now we just undo that and that. This swings down and then I just pull it right out the side. So this is the round bar I just took out and the only reason I'm taking it out is I think that I'm not getting enough aggression here on the very first part of the segment. So as the crop comes into the first segment here, I don't think the round bar is being aggressive enough. So I'm going to put the key stock in there to try and get some of the corn to pop off a little bit easier before it gets back into the back of the this rotor at the beginning here. So this is what it will be replaced with. So it's got a little bit of key stock and some wire across it. So in here, we've obviously got our concaves at the front. We've got key stocks in the back where it's separating. Down below, we have this prep pan. And from the prep pan, it walks out onto the sieves. But this pan here, this is under the back part of the rotor and it brings everything off the separated area of the rotor all the way back forward onto this prep pan so that it can work its way all the way back through the machine. So I'm just finishing up getting this thing ready to go for this morning. Uh, made a quick change in the concaves there just to try and get a little bit more aggression on this corn. Um, you guys that are running, uh, X9s, cases, smaller deers. What are you doing in your concaves? Are you using uh, the, the Etsy, con uh, Etsy concaves? Are you using round bar, key stock? What are you using on yours? I'd like to know if, uh, if we're the only ones that are having to make changes here or if, uh, if you guys have just sort of set it and, and forget it sort of thing. So throw them in the comments. Let me know what you're doing with your comment. One of the big concerns in Ontario lately has been this tar spot. You can see it here on the leaves. It's a disease that actually attacks the stem of the, the corn plant or the stalk of the corn plant to the point of where you lose bushels. You're also losing st stem or stalk integrity. And uh, 
stuff is drying down really fast and not getting any bushels off of it too. So this has been something in southwestern Ontario for the last, I'd say three, four years. It sort of started down along the lake, um, Lake Erie, southern part here, which is just south of us where we are. But it's gradually making its way north. Um, I've got friends up north of London that are seeing it this year. And it's getting to the point where if you don't spray, you are potentially losing major major bushels to uh, to your crop for the year. And um, um, yeah, it's just, it's interesting to see how quickly this has made its way here. Um, I'm wondering uh, where you are. Are you dealing with similar things uh, in the States, Southern, uh, Southern Ohio, um, Michigan, that sort of stuff like that, if you're in those areas? Um, it'd be interesting to see if you're seeing it. I'm also wondering if tar spots coming through because of the way that the um, uh, jet stream works and coming up our moist air off of uh, Lake Erie summer that, uh, that brings the moisture in. So um, let me know in the comments what you're seeing for, for tar spot in your area if you're, or if you even are seeing it. So I was able to get the variable speed header working this morning. So it'll do two and a half mile an hour standard and then once it gets up over that then the uh, intake chains and uh, everything else will speed up to be able to match whatever the ground speed is at. So one of the things with these guys is they're, uh, they're hog farmers. They actually asked me to put a little bit of cob in the sample for them, so. So this is the nice part about the fent on the buggy. So he's in foot pedal mode right now. And all he has to do is to move backwards is just touch the, uh, the throttle and he can move forward and backwards without having to use the clutch or anything like that at all. And I just switched it up for him. He's using the joystick now to control the gate. He's having troubles with one of the switches. So we ended up switching it over and he's finding that a lot easier to use.
So another benefit we're seeing today is it's a bigger bin, even with the 12 row, he can make a cut all the way through on a strikeout. Um, the deer can't do that with the smaller bin, even with an eight row. The best part about doing demos is when you get to go drive. I get to run this now. They're down some, uh, some bodies today. His brother has to go over and do a, a test plot for uh, some corn stuff that they did. So Matt hopped in the combine with Greg and I'm gonna hop in the 1038 and I get to run it for a bit to keep them going. I just turned the choppers on in this field now. Um, you can see the difference between the two. Um, they want to do a test plot 20 acres wide or somewhere like that to be able to see what their high speed disc does when they uh, when they run through it. So we'll do the rest of this field the way that it is and see what we get for them. So I've had some people ask what the difference between the chopping and the non chopping looks like. So right here we uh, we did non chopping. So here the, the stock is still kind of attached, but kind of not. It's just laying the stock all down in the row, but everything's still kind of attached, but it's it's either crimped or, or whatsoever there. You can see there's still a lot of dirt you can see down the middle here with that. Then you move over one row and this is chopped. So completely cut here and all the pieces are little small chunks like this from where the lawnmower blades have come through. So it is all completely obliterated into small pieces. So the reason for doing this is if you're gonna do a lot of tillage and you wanna get your stock size so that you can get the tillage and get some dirt up on top of it so that it decomposes really well, that's why a lot of people will do that. Um, reason for non-chop would be if you're gonna no-till beans into these next year, some people think that having the stock attached on the row makes it easier to do beans down the middle of those to be able to plant. We're getting close here on this uh, this demo here to being done. Um, I'd like to thank the Debeckers for having us here. We uh, quite enjoyed coming out for the day and, and spending it with them. Um, good comparison for them to see what the difference between their uh, their tractor and combine to, to ours is, and there were definitely some things that they liked. So um, yeah, uh, demos are always about just getting people to see stuff. Um, they were very open with us that they're not looking to buy right away and that's fine. We don't, uh, we don't expect that that's necessarily what's going to come out of a demo. We have to do the demo so they can see the differences and then start thinking about it from there. So that's what we did. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope uh, you guys throw some comments down below with some of the questions that I've asked about your farm and operations and if you're seeing uh, any of this tar spot moving into your territory and stuff. So throw that down there, let me know. Um, if there's anything you'd like to see different, by all means, throw it in there as well. Um, I'd like to, to try and tailor this to, to what people want to watch and stuff. So let me know what that is. Um, but yeah, other than that, uh, hope you guys have a great weekend and thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.